through and we're going to do an email validation utilizing JavaScript and rejects. So if we see where we are so far, so far we have our name and phone number fully validated. So if we type in Chris, uh, let me do capital Chris Carrington, that will work. And if we type in a phone number of 777-555-6666, that will also work. And if we mess it up, we see that it does not work. So now we want to do validations for the email. So we will tell the user it is a valid email if it is valid, and we will tell them that it is invalid if it is not. And what we are looking for is a certain amount of characters, so something like hello789, and then an at sign. And then we are looking for another set of characters like Gmail. Then we're going to be looking for a dot. And then we're going to be looking for another set of characters, so something like com. So as you can see, this validation is going to be fairly thorough. But we're going to start it just like we do all the other ones. And we're going to make sure that the field even has any values in it so far. So let's do that first. So again, we're going to start in JavaScript. We have our validate name here. We have our validate phone here. So now we are going to write function validate email. Okay, and in here, var email is assigned document document dot get element by ID dot value. And the ID that we want to use is something like comment email. So we have to come into wherever we have our label of, of, of our uh, input for email, and we have to say something like ID is assigned comment email. And then if we copy this and we paste it in here, now we will have the value of whatever is in there while the user is typing. But we also have to add that on key up so that that function will actually be called. And we will say validate email. I hope you guys are starting to see the pattern by now. And the last thing we have to remember is we have to have an ID for our label so that we can specify exactly where we want our prompt to go. Okay, same beginning steps every single time. All right, so now that we have, uh, we have called our function on on key up, so this function will be called, and then once the function is called, we will grab whatever that user's email is. So the next step is we want to validate and make sure that the email has some values in it. So all we say is if, whoop, if, can't type right now if um, email dot length equals equals zero then we will produce a prompt that will say email is required it will go into that prompt location so it will go into comment email prompt so we will paste that in there and the last thing we will paste in is red so as you can see, we are still utilizing that produce prop method. And now I'm pretty sure you guys are glad that you made this produce prop method because you can see that you're going to use this thing a lot anywhere that you want to use it. So now we want to return false because that was bad and it's going to give me that warning. But now we know that we also want to do something if it's good. So under this, let's produce a prompt. So if it never returned false, if this condition was false and it jumped under here, then it would produce this prompt that would say that it has a valid email address. And we want to put it in here, but make sure you change your color to green. And the last thing we will do is return true. So let's save this and let's see what we have so far. So if we refresh the page and we start typing in, hello world, it says valid email address. We take it out, email is required. So all it is checking is that there are any values in here. And that's always the first thing that you are going to want to check for. Now we need to get into our specific validations. So as you remember, we are going to need rejects. So as I said, in rejects, we are going to need some kind of thing that's like hello world and then maybe the user has some digits and uh, and then we are going to look for an at sign we are going to look for a cer uh, certain number of characters 
and then we're going to look for a dot, and then another certain amount of characters. So again, we're going to re utilize rejects to do this. And just a heads up, if you ever don't know what rejects you want to use, just hover over quick reference, and you guys can see so a really good reference to all the little things that you can do with rejects, what all those symbols mean. Okay? So, now what we are going to do is we are going to use those set notations that we've been utilizing a lot. So if you remember when we were looking for numbers, we used a set and we said we were looking for numbers between 0 and 9. And when we were looking for, in the validate name, when we were looking for characters, we used this set, which was capital A, capital Z, lowercase a, lowercase z, and then the star at the end to say you can have as many characters as you want. So we're going to do the exact same thing because we know that we are going to start with some characters. So let's say A to Z, and then A to Z. But we want to start at the beginning of the string, and we want to go for as many characters until it sees anything differently. So now within our set, we need to think of all of the things that could be involved in a user's email. Believe me, you probably won't get all of them, but if you can think about some emails maybe that you've ever used, you might think of, oh yeah, maybe sometimes someone can have a period in there, and all you would do is put a period in your set. Or what about an underscore? Or what about a dash? Or um, is there anything else I can think of? Uh, well, how about numbers? Zero to nine. Oh, now it's conflicting with this, so we need to have a backslash. That was actually a good thing um, to show you guys. Some some of the things that you guys can put in these sets um, have special values, like that dash usually means that it's between a range of numbers. So if something has a special value, you need to incorporate a backslash so that it kind of escapes that character. So we're saying that we're looking for any kind of letters. We're looking for maybe if there's a period in there, that would be valid. If there's an underscore, if there's a dash, or if there's numbers, all that stuff is valid. And there's a certain amount of characters. So now, what we are going to look for is one at sign. So to look for one at sign, you just say at. That's it. Now we are looking for a certain amount of characters. Any number of characters, uppercase or lowercase. Probably no numbers, though. So we'll just make another one of our sets and go capital A to capital Z, lowercase a to lowercase z. But as you can see, this only takes in the first letter, so we have to do our star symbol. Now we are looking for a dot, so you can just do your set notation, and you do a backslash and a dot. I actually should have done a backslash here, too. Uh, this is also a character that I'm pretty sure you want to escape when you see it, because if you look in here, a dot has a special value that says any character except a new line. But as you can see, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. It says backslash dot actually means a period. So we are doing the right thing. If you want to look for a dot, you should do a backslash. Um, and as you can see, I just chose to put this in a set. You could have put your at sign in a set too, and it still would have worked. Um, some people like to break up each one of their things in sets. I actually like to do that sometimes because it separates it nicely for me. And then the last thing we are going to look for is a certain amount of characters. Um, so A to Z. But as you know, usually these things end in .com or .edu or .org. They usually don't end in .like hello world. Like not a lot of characters. It's usually around three characters. So what we could say is that we would only accept something if it has two to four characters at the end of it. Oh, that's not a dash. It should be like that. So if the user typed in more too many characters, then it would not work. But we don't want the whole thing to match. We want it to all be invalid if they type in too many characters. So put your dollar sign at the end. So now, remember our caret and our dollar sign will encapsulate this string, so this whole thing. And this will say if the, everything in here is not matching this, then the whole thing is invalid. So the user would have to take out all that extra gibberish and put that in there. So, let's do some error checking. We said for Gmail, we only wanted um, only characters. So, if we type in a 9, it should not work. It does not work. And if we type in, let's say we did something like doctor.pete, 
or something like that. That works. So as you can see, our regex is working pretty nicely. So again, you can go, you could actually go online and see all kinds of regular expressions for email addresses. Tons of people do it. But if you can get used to just making these sets, putting in the things that you like, making sure you encapsulate everything, you can make your own regular expressions. Then look some up and say, oh, maybe I forgot about this, or maybe this would be cool too. So now let's add this into our JavaScript. So if we come over here, we're going to go down to validate email, and we are going to say if our email dot match. So now we are checking if the email matches this, do, do what's in here. But what we really want to check for is if the email does not match this regular expression, then produce the negative prompt. So that's why we do that little um, not sign in the beginning. So let's copy our entire regular expression, and let's do our two front slashes, and paste it in the middle. And now we want to produce our prompt that will say email address invalid. And we want to put it in the comment email prompt, and we want it to be read. And then we will return false. Okay, so now let's see if it works. So we're going to save this. We're going to come to our form. We're going to give it a refresh. And now we see if we type in this same email here and paste it in here, it will say valid email address. But what happens if we type in an 8 at the end? email address invalid or what happens if we type in an 8 in here email address invalid or if they don't include an at sign email address invalid so now we see it works and if we take out everything email is required so thank you for watching this has been Christopher Carrington with gmustudent.com I hope you guys are getting a firm grasp of rejects and JavaScript through these tutorials stay tuned for the next one and we are going to tackle the comments section see you guys later